new power is rising. Stain the land with the blood of our enemies. There will be no dawn for men. It's the 3019th year of the Third Age. The War of the Ring is in motion, and a shadow lies upon the Kingdom of Rohan. A darkness is gathering in the east, and rumors of defeat in Gondor trouble their hearing. But even worse is a new power that has arisen in the west. The wizard Saruman, their friend and ally, have betrayed them, and has gathered an army of evil creatures in the fortress of Isengard in rivalry of the Dark Lord Sauron. Saruman intends to obtain the One Ring before Sauron, and to ultimately become the sole ruler of Middle-earth. The spies of Saruman have reported the position of the One Ring, and Saruman has sent out terrible Urukai to capture the Ring Bearer. However, the orc bands of Saruman are forced to travel the lands of Rohan while hunting for the Ring, which leaves Saruman's objective honorable. Saruman quickly realizes that the planned invasion of Rohan cannot be postponed any further. For long, and with secrecy, Saruman has bought the chief advisor of the king, Grima Wormtongue. Theoden, the king of Rohan, has become a dotard, and the lies of Wormtongue weakens the leadership, infrastructure, and military power of the Rohirrim. However, there are still some obstacles that hinder Saruman in an easy conquest of the weakened Rohan. Theodred, the king's son, and Eomer, nephew of the king, are both valiant men and are not swayed by the deceits of Wormtongue. They are both marshals of the mark and have the military command over Rohan. Saruman therefore desired to kill Theodred and Eomer to eliminate the remaining obstacles, hindering his successful conquest. Saruman now initiated his plans, and the sole objective was to slay Prince Theodred. A large host left the gate of Isengard, and headed towards the fords of Isen. Saruman had a clear advantage at this crossing, for he had built a bridge close to Isengard, which could only be utilized by his forces. This allowed Saruman to easily surround the Rohirrim if they attempted to hold the fords, for Saruman's forces greatly outnumbered the Rohirrim. But Theodred had not been idle, and as soon as scouts reported that a great host was massing in Isengard, he summoned a muster and drew away a large part of his riders. He also gathered men from the levies of Westfold, and he now planned to overthrow Saruman's army before it was fully prepared. Theodred left a small portion of his strength at the east bank, which guarded the supplies, while he himself passed over with the main strength of his cavalry. It did not take long before Theodred's force spotted the vanguard of the enemy, and the Rohirrim charged with ferocity. The vanguard resisted, and inflicted some casualties, but they were quickly scattered. Theodred kept up the pace, and rode towards the main host, but trenches and pikemen halted the charge. His Eored was almost surrounded, and to Theodred's dismay, he spotted Isengarders on the other side of the river. But the Rohirrim cavalry came to the rescue of their prince, and charged into the orcs. Theodred's Eored was freed, and the Rohirrim retreated to the eastern side of the river. Theodred left the vanguard on the left side, under the command of Grimbold, while he manned the Eyed with his company, in case Grimbold had to be covered. But the forces of Isengard came too swiftly, and Dunlending horsemen, orcish wolf riders, and half orcs crushed the stationed resistance. The cavalry was swept away, and they were driven from the fords. The very elites of Saruman, mail clad half orcs, armed with axes, assaulted Theodred's bodyguard, and fierce fighting took place. But Saruman's warriors were too powerful and Theodred was hewn by a terrible half orc. In this dire hour came Elfhelm, and the Isengardis quickly retreated northwards and were pursued. The terrible axe warriors were surrounded, and they were beaten down after hard fighting. The enemy retreated, and the Rohirrim had successfully held the fords. But their losses were heavy, not least in horses, 
and even worse, the king's son was dead. Saruman had accomplished his objective, and he could soon proceed to invade the Westfold. Thus ended the first battle of the Fords of Isen, and word was sent to Edoras requesting Eomer and his riders on the battlefield. But Eomer came not, for he was imprisoned for breaking the customs of Rohan. Eomer had lawfully as Marshal of the Mark led a company of riders out of his domain and pursued and crushed a raiding ore company. But Wormtongue twisted the situation and made Theoden believe that Eomer had left the East Mark unguarded. In addition, he had allowed strangers to go free and had even lent them horses. Eomer's decisions would be of utmost importance for later events, as we will learn. Erkenbrand, Lord of Westfold, took up command of the Westmark, and he knew that a full-scale invasion was imminent. He therefore left command in the field to Grimbold, supported by Elfhelm, while he himself gathered more men to their cause. Grimbold manned both banks of the forge, mostly consisting of footmen, while Elfhelm drew a line with cavalry. In the meantime, news had reached Saruman of his raiding party's demise at the hands of Eomer. Saruman now fears the possible outcome that King Theoden has got his hands on the One Ring, and that he will learn of its power and use it against him. Saruman knows that if he fails to capture the One Ring, he is doomed, being a known traitor to both the Free Peoples and to the Dark Lord. Saruman does not hesitate, and he sends forces to the Fords, beginning his conquest of Rohan, hoping to obtain the ring while there is yet time. Not long did it take before Saruman's elites clashed into the Rohirrim. Though greatly outnumbered, the defenders resisted stubbornly. Orc and man fell alike, but Uruks eventually managed to pass through the defense and were already on their way to the eastern bank. But Grimbold was not idle, and he charged into the Uruks. The Isengarders were swept back, and the western defense still held. But the enemy commander threw in a battalion, and Grimbold was obliged to withdraw across the Isen with all of his remaining forces. The Isengarders had won the West Bank, but halted for a moment. Saruman had not yet revealed his full force, but it was not yet midnight when the red light was seen coming from the north. Thousands of Isengarders rushed over the fords, and Grimbol knew that he had not the numbers to hold them off, and he quickly drew a shield wall around his camp. Fierce stern landings attacked them from all sides, but they were without armor and less skilled than Rohirrim, and the shield wall held strong. Elfhelm was on his way to the rescue of Grimbold, but then came the dreaded wolf riders out of the shadows. Their assault was sudden, and Elfhelm's force was taken completely by surprise. Elfhelm could not come to the aid of Grimbold, and he also understood that the larger host was on the way, a host that their combined forces could not defeat in the openness. He therefore retreated eastward with his remaining riders. Grimbold quickly realized that Elfhelm's forces were occupied elsewhere, and he knew that retreat was the only option. He quickly mounted men and sent them out of the shield wall and attacked the Dun landings. A great confusion fell upon the attackers, and Grimbold seized the opportunity and retreated with the remaining footmen. At the same time as Grimbold had held the western bank of the ford, Gandalf the White had come to the Golden Hall and healed Theoden of his weariness. Wormtongue's intentions were unmasked, and Eomer's actions were acknowledged, for it had secured the secrecy of the Ringbearer's mission and saved the free peoples of Middle-earth from a potential disaster. The forces of Edoras were mustered, and ahead of it rode King Theoden himself, accompanied by the White Rider and other noble folk. Through the night they rode, and with great haste. Scouts soon reported that a great host was headed from the forge to Helm's Deep. Gandalf advised the King of the Mark 
to make for Helm's Deep, and then he mounted Shadowfax and vanished from their sight. Theoden King and his thousand riders rode on, and finally arrived at the dike that surrounded the deep. They made for the Hornburg, for their numbers were insufficient to man the dike, but their rear guard was left behind to give the Isengarder some resistance. To their joy, they found the fortress manned by a thousand men from Westfold, and hope was rekindled. Time passed, and Saruman's forces approached the dike. The rear guard let loose their arrows, and the dike was filled with stricken orcs. Fighting took place, and it did not take long before the orcs scaled the bank at many points, and the rear guard was forced to retreat. The garrison of Helm's Dyke had been beaten back, and the defenders awaited uneasily. The assailing host sent a shower of arrows over the battlements, and some found a mark. The enemy surged forward on all fronts. Then came the defenders' turn, and arrows and stones hailed at the Isengarders. Hundreds of orcs and men were pierced or crushed, and fell dead. Then the Dunlendings held their shields above them like a roof, while in their midst they bore two trunks of mighty trees, and orc archers gathered behind shooting at any defender opposing their movement. Aragorn, heir of Elendil, and Eomer, Marshal of the Mark, leaped out through a small hidden door with a company of stout men and clashed with the Dunlendings. The wild men were swept away, and the orc archers shot wildly. But the sortie upon the rock gained only a brief respite. The hosts of Isengard roared like a sea, and attacked with redoubled strength on all fronts. Hundreds of long ladders were lifted, and the dead and broken were piled and rose ever higher in hideous mounds, but still the enemy came on. The men of Rohan grew weary, and soon a clamor rang in the deep. Orcs had crept through the culvert where the stream flowed through, and charged into the deep. The men of Westfall leaped down the stairs, and their onset was fierce and sudden. The orcs gave away before them and wavered. Under Gimli the dwarf's direction, the culvert was blocked up with stone, and the assault was halted for a while. The host of Isengard was not beaten, and while the defenders lingered, they crept into the culvert and placed there the fire of Orthanc. The Isengarders renewed their attack on all fronts. The defenders were swept away by this sudden assault, and it quickly became apparent that the deeping wall was a lost cause. Eomer was driven back to the Narrows, while Aragorn retreated to the Hornrock. Grappling hooks were hurled, and ladders raised. The Rohirrim had work enough. Again and again, the orcs gained the summit of the outer wall, and again, the defenders cast them down. The fire of Orthanc blasted through the archway and orcs prepared to charge through the gate. But in this moment, the horn of Helm Hammerhand was sounded in the deep. Out rode King Theoden with his household, and beside him rode Aragorn, heir of Elendi. Neither orc nor man withstood them. The enemy was driven back and filled with terror, and a mass rout took place. But there was nowhere to escape, for a dark forest had suddenly appeared and guarded the north. And suddenly, there too appeared a rider clad in white on the ridge. Behind him leaped Urkenbrand with a thousand footmen. The hosts of Isengard roared, swaying this way and that, turning from fear to fear. Driven by madness, they leaped under the shadows of the forest, and none escaped the wrath of the Huons. Against all odds, the Rohirrim had victory. Not only was the battle won, but the power of Isengard was broken, for the ends of Fangorn had been roused by the hobbits Merry and Pippin, and had crushed the industry of Saruman at the same time as battle was fought in Helm's Deep. 
It was in this moment that Gandalf had requested Treebeard's aid, and the Huons of Fangorn had come to the rescue of Rohirrim. The outcome of the battle was strategically important for the free peoples of Middle-earth, as it allowed Rohirrim to focus their military attention to the east and ride to war in Gondor. Did you find the hidden easter egg? If you did not, I would advise you to specifically rewatch the Battle of Helm's Deep and let me know if you found it. If you are interested in lore from Tolkien's Legendarium, make sure to check out these videos right here. Remember to subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon to show your support.